Hello. And good day. Man, this music is <clears throat> loud as hell on my end. Let me see here. The window is not the same size as the stream, so I'm just gonna do. Just gonna do that. Uh. We'll just put some text up here. All right, I don't know. <laughs> oh wait, maybe maybe if I, yeah, you know, I put it in the middle. Center, no, wait. Center to screen, and then I make the dark one color black. Ah, see, now you can barely tell the window is too small. <laughs> Hi, funny Rony. Let's see. Did I tweet? I haven't tweeted. I'll tweet the link. Twitch. Twitchy. Twitchy. Twitchy dot the TV. I do be live. No. Let me see. How is the music? It looks like it's about a normal volume. It's really loud for me, and it, I think it's I think it's good for you guys. I think it's yeah, it's probably fine. So, <clears throat> sorry. This is Psycholonials, a game I know so little about. Uh, I don't know if it's a game or a visual novel, <laughs> or I know it's a visual novel, but I don't know if there's any gameplay in it. Or if it's literally just uh, a visual novel. Either way, probably going to be doing a lot of reading with my with my uh, wonderful voice, as as uh, I've been complimented on by uh, <laughs> Bleep Blomp Clamp, <clears throat> Bleep Blomp uh, Ben multiple times. I've been on Ben's stream a bunch of times. If you don't follow Ben, you should go follow Ben. Because if you follow Ben and you watch his streams, chances are you'll bump into me <laughs> every now and then, like every other day. Um, not really, but I've been on there and it's been fun. Um, yeah, so this game is made by, or written primarily by Andrew Hussey, who made uh, Hive Swap. He wrote um, Homestuck. He wrote... Uh, 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 a book, an illustrated book called Calliope the Clown or something. I forget the name of it. Um, he's very talented, kind of a postmodern author, I guess. Um, I've been a huge fan of his stuff for a long time. He put out this game. It's like eight dollars. Um, so I thought. I'm gonna experience it for the first time on stream and you guys have probably not played it because it's an indie game it's small it's newly released you know um so you guys are probably going to be experiencing the story the first time together with me so we'll be experiencing it together for the first time both of us you and me <laughs> okay, I'm not stalling, uh, waiting for more people to join the stream. <laughs> okay, it's fine. <clears throat> Let me just get into a, a, a comfortable position here. Sorry, I, I should be muting my microphone when I move around because when I bump into the table, it spikes on the on the readout and stuff. I am not Joseph Stalin. Hi, Everton. Okay, so I was surprised that the, there were so many languages. Um, what is? Oh, 
Oh, this is Japanese. This is Chinese. Okay. I was just confused. Anyway. <laughs> uh, start. Chapter 1 of 9. Summer that never was. An island sits off the eastern coast of the United States. It's a little over 10 miles wild, and most of the year a little over 10,000 people deep. I don't... Okay. They call it a summer colony. When the weather gets warm, the number of people pushing down on the island swells to around 50,000. Hi, Mr. Hansen. The town here shares its name with the island. You live here. You're one of the residents pushing down the place year-round. The steady residents don't contribute much weight, though. Off-season life is like a reprieve for the island. Like lifting the load of the back of a perennial workhouse workhorse. Let me know if I should raise the, the BGM, by the way. The Summer Crush is a different story. A hundred thousand feet at once give you the impression the seasonal colonists have all conspired to shove the charming New Inland Rock right back into the ocean. But 2020 is different. You don't see it happening this year. Can't say you're heartbroken about it either. Your name is Zen. It's pronounced more like Jen than Zen. But most people have been determined to mispronounce your name since elementary school, so at some point you decided to go by Z, and it stuck. Or Z? I guess, in the American pronunciation. I feel like Peter would live here. <laughs> Peter basically lives here, yeah. Stuck it to your parents too, sort of. Who endowed you with the romanization of a name which would either guarantee a lifetime of correcting people or inter interminably acquiescing to their wrongness. You like Z better anyway, because it's yours, not theirs. I'm gonna do the American pronunciation. Because I, I think that's more correct. It's roughly 3pm, and you've just woken up earlier than yesterday, so that's a plus. And with a bit of a hangover, but that's far from unusual. Your bedroom is a bit messy, but you don't notice anymore. That's... that's a mood. It's a cozy little depression nest, and it serves its purpose well, which is to store the body of a depressed 23-year-old woman when she's not working. Whilst the decor manages to accurately reflect her personality and emotional landscape. Ordinarily, you'd reach for your smartphone before even getting out of bed, and whittle away the first hour of the day scrolling through the timelines of various accounts. For whatever reason, today feels a little different. You stand up to stretch your legs, and have a look around to reacquaint yourself with the artifacts of your life which have achieved invisibility through familiarity. You've had this exact arrangement of... Wait, no, did I? Oh, okay. I thought I cl... Uh, never mind. You've had this exact arrangement of posters taped to your wall since you moved here. Before that, actually. These posters were on the wall of your dorm in the college, in this exact pattern. When the time came to make your departure, desperate get away from campus, you ripped it off your wall in one big, taped together mass, rolled it all up, and hit, it, hit the road. Then when you got here, you simply unrolled it, put it back up. Why mess with it? This particular hodgepodge of pop cultural nonsense says as much about yourself as you'd ever care to say using a wall. This particular hodgepodge of pop cultural nonsense says as much about yourself as you'd ever care to say using a wall. Say... Okay. Maybe it's a consequence of the media you consumed that made you feel this way, but you've always believed you can tell a lot about a person by studying the things they used to like. In fact, you might even go as far as saying, in this era, an individual's personality isn't much more than a composite of all the media they've ever consumed, and their favorite stuff in particular. I literally made a video about this, my How Capitalism Causes Depression uh, video. I said basically this. Um, we're talking about Eric Fromm's uh, uh, theory about individualism uh, or the need for for an individual identity and how 
individuality and identity in capitalism is uh, is a facade or a farce. This is pretty much word for word that the theory, Eric Fromm's theory about capitalism and uh, and uh, identity. That's why whenever you meet someone new, you kind of wish you could just look at their bedroom and take a quick tour of all their interests, sparing you a lot of laborious, laborious banter and wondering over whether someone's worth your time. Again, it could be certain types of content you've consumed in your past which resulted in this philosophy, but you can't be sure. All you can do is refresh your memory on your various interests and to reaffirm who you are to yourself, along with any imaginary voyeurs who have inexplicably, inexplicably decided to tune into your underwhelming morning ritual. That's your Metal Gear Solid poster. You have created a number of fan works for this series, and not a single one of them is suitable for children. <laughs> Very few are suitable for most adults, actually, but never mind that. You think Kojima has an advanced understanding of war, which has eluded authors far more celebrated than he. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna use the arrow keys. You also think Kojima has an ad oh wait. Oh yeah. You also think Kojima has an advanced understanding of horny gay men with enormous butts, which is an asset of far greater literary value, in your opinion. Not true. <laughs> 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 Insane Clown Posse, of course. You're um, way out of this by now, but you had a juggle of face in high school. The reason for this decision was extraordinarily complex and layered. Far over the head of anyone who would ever be inclined to wonder. If you even need to ask why, being down with the clown cannot be fully explained. You mainly keep this up as a reminder of your roots. A reminder of a philosophy toward family, which you prefer the more conventional definition. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm just gonna look at the real quick. Oh, Black Forest ninety eight. Hi, doggo. Oh no, wait. Sorry, not hi, doggo. Uh, you're my favorite customer. Welcome. Thanks so much for subscribing. Uh, what was I gonna look at? Oh yeah, I just wanted to look at the, how bad the delay was, but it's fine. <clears throat> You've had this up since 2017, which is before post when ate ship with all the face tattoos. Increasingly these days, he seems determined to look like hot garbage, and yet the uglier he gets, the more fond of him you grow. You will never forsake this kind-hearted goblin prince. You could tattoo a dick on his face, and you'd probably <laughs> weave tears of joy. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's relatable. I love Andrew Hussey, man. I, uh. It's like you said when you checked out the ICP poster, you like to keep reminders of your pop culture roots. There was a long story you read when you were young. You almost never talk about it now, but this guy here... This guy is here to remind you, whether you like it or not, it's part of you now. That's, uh... If you know, you know. Calendar marks the days for your shift at a local restaurant where you work as a waitress. The page is set to February 2020, but this is wrong. The pandemic sent you into an unusually bleak depression spiral, so you haven't flipped the page in months. This is right. The date is April 20th, 2020. You guess you labeled a lot of these months in advance at the beginning of the year when you were in higher spirits. A week ago was a day relevant to a childhood interest. So you facetiously drew a little doodle to commemorate. And today, of course, is weed day. Not that you actually smoke weed. <laughs> so relatable. So I, I'm relating so much to this person. I feel it might just be me. I'm like that, um... Um... What's that meme? Hang on. I have so many tabs open. So many tabs. Hang on. Hang on. Second. 
me please put that there whenever I say that's relatable I'll have to put this up to cover my avatar okay let's put that down now I have that ready to go <laughs> um I remember being excited for that day then the entirety of January March 2020 happened yeah it still feels like um it still feels like uh march was like two months ago march 2020 was two months ago it was a year ago it's march 2021 march 2020 was a year ago literally 12 months it feels like it was two months ago it feels like last month was like november and then the month before that was march it's just because it's just because we do the same thing all day and like the key to making time feel like it passes more slowly and and stuff is just to do to do something new every day because that way you have more memories because when you do the same thing every day all your memories you kind of blend together and it all feels like you know oh that was like a week that i did that when it was you know a year you know because we've all spent the last year indoors doing basically the same thing every day for a year so yeah there was more panic here when we had 200 cases than now when we have over 3000 i mean <laughs> yeah basically uh okay uh oh wait uh, not because you actually smoke weed. Okay, mostly on account of being too lazy to bother acquiring any. But that does mean the annual milestone shouldn't be solemnly honored with the gravity of a religious holiday. <laughs> As you stare at the calendar, you mostly just can't believe it's almost May already. Has it really been that long since you went to work? I guess that must be right. Early March was the last day the restaurant was open, and you've been holed up here ever since without pay. Yeah, just hold on. Just you gotta get that fourteen hundred dollars stimulus bill. It's you know any day now, any day now. And then after that, you're on your own because there is not gonna be another one <laughs> like that's it. You got you got fourteen hundred dollars to live on for the rest of twenty twenty one. And, and, you know, you're not getting $15 minimum wage either, so make do. <laughs> uh, you've gotten by borrowing rent money from your friend Abby, who's also been shut in since the outbreak began. Not seeing her in months, not seeing anyone really has had a very negative effect on your mental health. Probably the biggest reason you've been waking up so late these days. There's a ton of computer equipment here lying dormant. It hasn't been powered up in years, actually. Doing so would probably remind you of college, college traumas. Hang on. I just wanna do that. That should be good. Sometimes you wonder if you will ever, t ever turn it on again. Oh, oh, it's not a laptop. It's a tower in the corner. That's not relatable. That's upside down Leo pointing. That's... That's... But... Dude. There. That's upside down, Leo pointing. That's unrelatable. Okay. <laughs> That's such a stupid joke. 
Here in 2021, everyone gave up on quarantine and started going out. Yeah. Probably for the best, your hacking days are behind you. A lot of those old projects you were working on could have gotten you into some serious trouble. These days, it's all about cultivating your brand. Although it hasn't been going that well, more to the point, you'd probably be the first to admit your online brand is fairly shitty. One has to start somewhere. Rebuilding a social media presence after a series of psychologically devastating catastrophes doesn't happen overnight. On the floor is a printout of your manifesto. You wrote this a few years ago before your life melted down. It began as an ironic exercise, but the more you wrote, the less ironic it became. You completed it just before the series of calamitous events leading to the aforementioned meltdown. You doubt this is a total coincidence. Since as Abby likes to point out, only crazy people write manifestos, uh, which is more than a little hypocritical since she's been actively writing on one herself. The Jubilite Manifesto. Still, hers is pretty light reading and revolves around her secret RPF shipping theories, whereas the Jubilite Manifesto is an incendiary piece of left-wing literature that happens to revolve around unrepentant clownery. She's probably right to say it's for the best you never picked this thing up again. This insane clown posse communist party. ICPCP. Insane clown party. Insane clown unist party. Clown unism. <laughs> Your stroll down special interest lane has delayed the inevitable long enough. Tend to get pulled into the vortex of your traditional wake up strolling binge. Timelines, the threads, the feeds, the comments, they won't brainlessly ogle themselves. You pause to admire your lock string. It's a more recent picture of your boy, Post. Complete with all of his most recent utterly grotesque tattoos. The man is looking like fresh hell. Your heart palpitates and you feel momentarily nauseous. But you regain your composure long enough to unlock your phone. Your phone unlocks. There's your background. It's a gratuitously pornographic piece of fan art depicting two muscular homosexual soldiers caught in the throes of passion. You keep this one as your unlock screen so that prying eyes in public don't get a gander of material which some may find inappropriate. I wonder if it's going to be TOS in this game. Nah. It's on the Google Play Store. It's probably fine. As a wise ass friend has pointed out, the Malone lock screen is arguably more indecent to flash in public. Hang on, let me just do No like there's no like sensor nudity button. Alright, it's fine. Like if Homest if if Homestuck had like a hundred thousand fucking pages and not a single one of them contained graphic imagery, this game probably doesn't. I mean, it contained stuff that was way worse than porn, but nothing that was like, you know, indecent. Just puppets. Those fucking puppets. What happened to my room? Oh, I removed it just because it, it, it takes up so much of the screen. It, it blocks the game and stuff. I don't, uh, I still have it. I just, I just, uh, moved it. Moved it for now. Uh, Malone Lockstream is arguably more indecent flesh in public. Enough dithering over your gallery of obscene mails. Time to check your accounts. Most of your effort in attempting to build a brand has gone into your Instagram account. As a new influencer trying to get your footing, you've been uh, tinkering with something in the e-girl genre. So far, you aren't doing anything too crazy. Your dadaist impulses are what your TikTok is for. Uh, Z, she, they, bad postmaker, Nantucket, MA, Massachusetts, New England. 996 followers. Z, 69, clown boner, 420. <laughs> 69, clown boner, 420. That's an awesome username. I love it. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Here it's mostly a bunch of 
tame, silly shots of you posing around the island. The boys love it when you go to the beach for some reason. Very basic, your light following mostly attracts a bunch of simps, reply guys, and rude remarks in the comment section. Eric B0452, you're ugly. Swag Doggo99, we stand a queen. E boy Steve, fire emoji. That Gerald, nobody. Space base. 69 clan bonner, serving looks like a goddess. I hate that meme so much. Oh, uh, it makes me, it's, it annoys, it frustrates me and annoys me for unreasonably, just for no reason. It's just so infuriating. I keep seeing the fucking, um, nobody, blank, blank, blah, 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 does this. It's like, it's not, it's so unrelated. Like, it's, it's nothing to do with anything. It's just so far removed from, like, the original meme that it doesn't make any sense anymore. Anyway, Pickle Rick Fart says, total shit. <laughs> You're no sugar, uh, there's no sugar coating it. Your TikTok is just plain weird, full of avant garde shit posts of a humorous nature, usually performed in a completely deadpan manner and with oblique intent to the average user of this platform. Sometimes you will not only post cringe, um, always ironically though, which, as far as you are concerned, is dynamite content. <laughs> Alright, thanks for the bits. You automatically got a <laughs> automatically got a bit leader because I never uh, never do bits, never act bit. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, anyway, thank you. I don't I don't shill for myself very often. Uh, Clown Bonner for 20. <laughs> I love this art. There's so many good, like, um... I feel, I feel like some of these could be, like, uh, emotes into the, in the, in the chat. Like this one. I like this. What a bit even do? Oh, there, uh, it's a donation. It's like Twitch's own currency. You bet you get bits on Twitch and then you send them to a streamer and then the streamer gets money from Twitch. Don't watch Twitch besides my channel? Oh, thank you, Mr. Hansen. It's just like an easier way to, to donate to someone. Not many people understand it, though a handful of loyal sims in your follow list always seem to lap it up. Abby never misses an opportunity to reprimand you for your cringe posting. This is to be expected though, she's a pro after all, and even you know your cringe posts are indefensible. That's entirely the point. Twitter is bad, you hardly use this account, but you keep it on hand for the sake of continuing to receive abuse. You're not sure. The dark sinks and harassments have finally died down over the last year, nothing close to what they were just after your meltdown. Persecution for your past crimes is barely a trickle, barely at a trickle now, which is a double-edged sword. <laughs> uh, these are good tweets. I would... Hang on. I have to check if this is a real Twitter account. I have to check if someone has Z69. Z69... Clown boner 420. I have to see if someone has this. <gasps> One second. One second.
God damn it. Okay. It was available. I tried to get it, but I couldn't. Ah, shit. Okay. Sorry for wasting your time. Alright, if anyone else wants to grab it, it's available. I thought it would be really funny, but I couldn't get it because I had to verify my phone and shit, and it wouldn't send me the verification code. Oh well. It's such a good username. I really I really wish I really, really wish I could have taken that. Not to get fewer death threats, but it's also a sign that no one really cares to bother, which is bad for the brand. Been a few days since he posted any content, the fans are getting restless. Not really. They are restless in your anxious imagination. You're just shy of 1,000 followers. Maybe a new post will push it over the edge. Of course, you don't understand the crowd isn't eager for... You understand the crowd isn't that eager for more content. You know it's a common affliction among aspiring influencers. They need to keep pushing content out of fear. Their followers will get bored. Hang on. There it is. That's relatable. Okay. Acknowledged and moving on. As if they're a slobbering pack of wild dogs, insatiable beasts who just who must have more, more, more. You're not an idiot and you follow plenty of accounts too. You know you could barely give a shit if even your favorite accounts stop posting for a while. They can chill out if they want. It simply would not affect your life. Your posting habits are more a matter of personal ethos. You want to build a brand. The content must flow, and so you shall make it flow. But what to post? This, as always, is the burning question. You fire up TikTok because that's where the shit posts go, and God knows you don't have the energy for assembling a respectable e-girl fit, or fixing up your makeup. You try to think of more funny, deadpan nonsense you can bullshit your way through while lying in bed. But not before fixing yourself up a little. Christ, you look like hell, you fix your hair up a bit. No, still bad. Blah. You know what? Fuck it. You're just gonna use an absurd filter and crank the irony dial all the way up, looking more and more like it's gonna be a cringe post Monday. <laughs> you start babbling incoherently, you even turned on a voice filter to maximize the cringe factor. What are you even saying? You have no idea where this is going. Play it back and yikes, it's hard to even get through the whole thing. It's dealing massive amounts of psychic damage. Perfect, actually. This is what you were going for. Let the simps grit their teeth through every second of this monstrosity thank you for it truth be told this is the caliber of content they deserve <laughs> yep the reply guys are lining up to kiss your ass as always the usual suspects every time a little entourage of loyal and lascivious hype men sort of adorable and disgusting to you simultaneously but mcfuckles you just posted cringe sir soy she don't miss nyan machine cringe baby E-boy Steve again, you <laughs> dropped a whole sack of these rounds. That Gerald, a true angel. Uh, yeah, Z69 Clownboiner420. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and register that if you can. Actually, maybe more disgusting than usual today. That feeling is creeping in. Disgust, not with the boys per se. It runs deeper than that. Your post fucking sucked and you're on the verge of regretting it. Why is it always like this? Pushing out content. After hitting submit, equal odds that sense e equal odds that sense of loathing begins to settle in. Was the post a good idea? Could it have been better? Should you have just not bothered at all? It makes you feel crazy, this media landscape. Above all, you think your disgust isn't so much about the specific post as it is with the general lack of direction and inspiration. What the fuck are you even trying to do? What are you about? You're too depressed to come up with answers today, but then that seems to be true every day. You log off TikTok with dismay. You're getting a DM on Discord. It's your friend of Abby. Not surprising, since she almost always hits you up after you post some content, usually with some friendly critique. Today is probably no different, and you have a feeling you already know what she's gonna say. Abby, isn't it a bit early in the evening to be sad posting cringe? You usually have the courtesy to wait till I'm sound asleep and you're drunk off your ass. Z, fuck off, I know it's cringe. Abby, 
So this is what it's come to. Your brand as an ironic cringe poster is congelating, congealing before my eyes. Should I give them different voices? I'm not, I'm not a very good voice actor. Um, what are voices I can do? I don't know. Uh, I guess it's hard to come up with like ideas for shit. Ain't that the truth, said Abby. I don't know. I don't know. I can't get a read on, on like Abby's personality. Um, what are you talking about? All you do is post vids. You looking hot and saying dumb shit. Yeah. That'll be it. Yeah. That'll be Abby. That's a hell of a brand if you can make it work, which you obviously can. At least you know what you're about. I'm still trying to figure that out. Has been going well lately. That's easy. You. Wait, what? I'm still trying. Uh, you make a work as job as you can. At least you know what you're about. Still trying to figure that out. Has been going well. That's easy. You are also about looking hot and posting cringe apparently. Well, not fucking hot enough. Not like you. You do a southern bell? No. Nonsense! The sizzling bitch plastered all across my timeline begs to differ. That's it. And the gentleman callers you have attracted to your content, they seem none too displeased. Christ. Whoa, what's this? Z? You crossed the 1000 follower mark! That's it, that's the voice. See, you're being so down on yourself for nothing. You're welling your way to the big leagues. The fuck is this patronizing shit? Besides, how am I even on your timeline? You don't even fucking follow me. You're too embarrassed to remember. Because it would hurt your brand if people could check your follow list and see my free cast there with all my past baggage. Aw, oh, that's not fair. You know the game, Z. How many of your fucking 3 million followers would you really lose if you followed me? I do follow you, which with an all, you know this. Cross the 1,000 follower, just like Asher's Twitch. Yeah, I did. I did cross 1,000 followers, and I got 3,000 followers on Twitter, and like 65,000 on YouTube. Which is like, <laughs> why won't anyone on YouTube follow me on the other platforms? <laughs> I mean on your main, Abby. What would it cost you realistically if I just showed up on that list? No fanfare, no shoutouts, or any bullshit like that. Just one friend following another because she's got her back. You'd lose, what, a few grand, maybe? Even then, it'd just be a handful of snarling cunts you don't need stinking up the joint anyway. It's not even about that. It's about keeping the discourse down. Come on. I mean, not to sound like a bitch, but I couldn't handle the shit you went through. You know damn well... We both got the same kind of dirt on us, but like, but what? But you already fucked yourself up, and I'm still keeping a lid on it all, like, delicately. And if you thought it was a rough for you, think about what it would be like for me at my level of visibility. Oh, I see how it fucking is. You're too famous, so you'd fall harder than I did. It's fine, I got thrown to the wolves because I'm a nobody, right? No, I mean, like... I had to go to the fucking hospital, Abby. Okay, fuck, I'll follow you, Jesus. I was just messing with you. Why do you have to turn it into such a serious thing? I don't know. It's fine, actually, don't follow me. I know exactly why you don't, I'm just being a shitty because I'm in a bad mood. You're right, of course. A triggered discourse, it'd be one of the... One to take most of the heat anyway. I'd be the one to take most of the heat anyway. I just need to keep pacing my ground to get my hand. If it triggered discourse, I'd be the one to take most of the heat anyway. I just need to keep piecing my brand together the old fashioned way. Old fashioned? Like horse and carriage shit? Yes, Abby, that's exactly what I mean. Like how people used to cultivate their social media platforms when everybody owned horses. What? Horses? What? I was fucking joking. I mean, just figure out what I'm trying to do or say here. And let people who are into that 
come to me naturally. Type of people who wouldn't give a fuck about that what my past is like. I know you were joking. Can we please just let it go unsaid for once that I always both know when we're joking? Well, we always both know when we're joking. We always joking. We get the shit. We are not basic bitches. Yeah, I know you know. My dry response to you was also a joke, idiot. Is this you and philosophy tube? <laughs> no. I've never spoken to uh, to Abby to philosophy tube. You can cool it on the key mashing. Bye. Bye -bye. Hey unknown one, two, three, thanks for subbing. Oh, Mr. Hansen, thanks for gifting a sub. Oh, that's what happened. Uh, I'm so fucking hungover and the, the texting equivalent of listening to noisy traffic. Chaotic juxtaposition dharma. Question marks. Autocorrected key smash exclamation. Take the edge out for my poor and feeble friend. Oh, autocorrecting the key mash. Um, a 1k follower gift. Oh, thank you. Oh. I do that sometimes. It's one of my good goofs, as you know. Whenever you do that, it's only funny to you. It's just confusing to everyone else. Nope. It's objectively hilarious to all involved. And I won't ever not be confused when you do it. Lol, as if I ever even ever talk to anyone much but you. At least maybe we can agree the notion of chaotic juxtaposition dharma sounds pretty cool or whatever that even means. Fuck yeah. That's why I thought you might be bringing up a worthwhile topic rather than continuing to destroy my morning with your useless brain garbage. LMAO morning. It's almost fucking four, bitch. Good point. I gotta get going. Okay. Any sign of you going back to work yet? Nah. I think that job is toys for good. Shit, why? For a while I was hearing stuff from the owner about reopening the restaurant and getting ready for the summer, but I haven't heard from her in weeks. I think she might have given up on the whole idea. Uh, they even will be a tourist season and just left the fucking island. Or maybe she just got the Rona and died. Fuck. It's fine, I don't really care. Okay. What about rent? You need me to send money or... No, I'm alright. I think I just won't pay rent this time. I don't even give a fuck anymore. What's this idiot gonna do? Evict me? Good luck with that, bro. <laughs> Incredible attitude. I love you. Okay. Gonna eat some shit right now because I feel bad. Eat some shit. Not eat some shit. Eat some shit. Eat some shit. Yeah, it's the emphasis on the eat, not the shit. Okay. <laughs> Juxtaposition always makes my English essays. Uh, you head to the kitchen, which is in much better shape than your bedroom. You pause to consider that the only reason it isn't quite as disastrous is because you spend so little time in here. You make occasional trips to pers per 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 peruse. Oh, peruse. I don't know why I looked at that and my brain went, Purduce. Ah, yes, I know this word. It's purduce. <laughs> Peruse your scant supply of food through your copious supply of alcohol. Then, more often than not, it's right back to bed. This fridge is a total wasteland. It's hard to get out. Grocery shopping. Sheltering in place has warped your lifestyle beyond recognition. Much easier to order shit, but money has been running low, and hitting Abby for cash gets old. It's a pot of craft macaroni you think you made, what, five days ago? It looks like absolute shit, but it'll have to do. You heat it up on the stove for a couple minutes, then bring it to the kitchen table for consumption directly out of the pot. You make a mental note that this depression meal life hack could make for some decent, ironic TikTok content. <laughs> No, need some work. First you need to heat up the weak old macaroni, then to save time you transport the pot outside, put the entire thing directly in a garbage can. Then to save even more time you curl up in a nearby bush and patiently wait to pass away. 
Yeah, that sounds better. Not today, though, because you already shot your TikTok shot. On second thought, that idea barely even counts as a joke. Realistically, this meal belongs nowhere except the dumpster. The macaroni is practically inedible. Force a few more mouthfuls just for the sake of preventing some of your internal organs from shutting down due to malnutrition and put it aside. What next? Oh yeah, might as well get an early start. This bottle of whiskey is already open anyway. That's because it's the same bottle you opened yesterday. Now that breakfast is over, it's time to phase two of the day to kick in the gear. Keeping yourself alive is hard work. Making such a healthy breakfast every morning is really taxing. It takes a lot of you. A lot out of you. A couple spoons, as the emotionally brittle millennials like to call them. Right down the drain, just like that. When you're low on spoons, the only thing for it, only thing for it is to recharge with another session of mindless scrolling on your phone. Do you enjoy it? Hell no. But spoons don't grow on trees, and the invisible spoonometer, which probably floats over your head, seems to respond favorably to the practice. Takes a lot out of you. A couple spoons, asked the emotional bird. I've never heard that expression before. Okay. So it's like exhaustion, I guess. <laughs> okay. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Some drama brewing over here, some discourse ramping up over there. Fuck these people, absolutely fuck every single one of them and all the infantile shit they argue over. Trump did what now? Who fucking cares? Democracy is over, moving on. Wait, was this another senile rapist that's challenging him for the presidency? Be still, your breath beating heart. Glug, glug. Wow, that's burn on uh, Joe Biden. Attention turns to the comments. Uh, your posts have been racking up. Even on old posts, there are always a few new replies to check out for a laugh. Who's this bitch talking shit in your mentions? Oh no. A shill runs down your spine. This is one of the nightmare people who helped cancel you a few years ago. Candice Schmandis, LMEO. Did any of you disgusting psychopaths even know who this bitch is? Do you know what she did? You can assume that if you're willing to follow this con, it's only on account of ignorance, but if you continue to follow her after you see all the receipts, then I can only assume you're... It's quite well done dialogue-wise, despite being tedious AF. <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. Candice Schmandis. Oh, wow. Thought she got bored of you, but it looks like she's had it again. She's working hard to... Dredge up your problematic past to make sure anyone who didn't realize you did that stuff stays well informed. Uh, what a service she's doing for the public. You simply block the vile harpy and continue scrolling. People like her tend to be hit and run trolls. Sure, it's still somewhat triggering to see them rear their heads now and then. It's pretty rare these days. The followers with the real staying power, of course, are the reply guys. A merry little band of lonely boys who flutter near your flame. Modest simp farm, as you've come to regard it. God bless them. And God bless America. That's the American dream, right? To own a nice little farm. You can herd anything on it. On your quaint plot of land. A humble patch of dirt the founding fathers died to bequeath you. They died for your right to harvest simps. Maybe they, maybe they weren't half bad. Well, no, they were. You're just an enterprising woman making the best of a series of ill-intended imperialist blunders which took place several centuries ago. I guess that's all anyone's doing, really. Wow. Now that's a mood. Hang on. There we go. Relatableness acknowledged. Uh, moving on. Oh, ooh, I like that smirk. Look at that. That's cute. Okay, these boys, though, they aren't genocidal frauds who stain the history books of your public education. They're mostly just a bunch of harmless, randy fools. You're almost fond of them against your better judgment. I wonder how many members of this little flock happen to live here on the island. Probably nobody, since you have so few followers. You guess some of Abby's followers might live here, though. Actually, it's more than likely since Abby lives here, too. Probably got a few simps who are thrilled to be living on the same small island with such a sexy and popular influencer. <laughs> oh, I like her whale mug. That's... Oh, I like that. I want a whale mug. I want a mug with a whale on it. And whiskey in it. 
Can the same basic principle apply to you on a smaller scale? Someone following you just because he happened to notice you're local? Not out of the question, you linger on the idea. The 1,000 people who follow you, they like you, right? Ostensibly, this is why people follow each other. They hate which has chased you around has obscured this truth. But it seems likely this is how normal people operate. That's kind of incredible for you to dwell on. But these people actually like you. Feels like a miracle that anyone would. Okay. That's relatable. Alright. <laughs> Try to make the clown butter account. Were you successful in making the clown butter account? Could you make it? Report back to me on the on the success of that. You're certain that this list overwhelmingly consists of cishet males. You wonder how many of them are attractive. Can't possibly be more than a precious handful. You're trying to imagine these kings, these magnificent jewels in the rough. <laughs> Uh, hit the SMS bullshit. Hit the limit. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, for some reason you have to both... Uh, you have to both use an email to, to verify and a phone number. I tried adding my phone number, but it didn't send me the text. I just didn't get it. Maybe I'll check. Maybe I haven't gotten it now. Nope, still haven't gotten it all this time later, so... What's your opinion on the Islamic Golden Age? Um invaluable to humanity and basically saved the western gener uh the western civilization and culture um all the all the mathematics the geometry uh, uh euclid plato aristotle all the philosophers uh who were translated by the arabs uh and the, well not just the arabs but the 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 muslims um in the in the various caliphates the Umayyads and the uh, uh, Abbasids uh, and the later ones. <laughs> um, the Egyptian scholars uh, during the Muslim era, like it's insane how influential, um, uh, how influential the Islamic Golden Age was for European history. Something that we don't talk nearly enough about, and and especially in in our education system, in, in Sweden in particular, we have like as, you know, there are a minority, but like we have Arabs in the country, right? Uh, like I've had a couple Arab students in, in my classes. And I wish uh, the Islamic Golden Age was like, had a bigger presence on the curriculum. Because um, we don't really talk about it. But I think we totally should. Because uh, I, I, I think it just... I, th I think it just if I was from an Arab country, uh, especially if I had to, you know, emigrate from it or flee from it as a refugee due to war and, you know, I lost that part of, you know, my culture and my heritage, you know, and and, I, and I'm disconnected from like the, the history of my people and, and my parents' culture. And, you know, I go to a Swedish school and I learn the Swedish language and I, and I, and I go to like a Swedish history lesson. Swedish history, or like the history subject in Sweden, is mostly about the history of Sweden, like all the various kings. Um, like all, yeah, like all the various kings and the few wars we had. Like in the grand scale of things, like in, from a world history perspective, very irrelevant bullshit that most Swedish people don't even remember. It's just something we have to learn in school. But like if. Um, yeah, like if I was Arab and I came over to this new country, uh, had to learn this whole new language and I, um, and in that class I was taught about, you know, this incredible history about the country or like the region that I came from and like the culture of my parents, I feel like that would be very meaningful to me. Um, and it's important to like connect history to, to the students. So that's my that's my thinking is is it's important to have relatable history. You know? And I said relatable, so I have to put this up. Okay, that's it. Only reason I learned about it was because I went to a Muslim private school. Learn both Maltese and Arab Muslim history. 
Oh, you're from Malta. Malta is awesome. Uh, I don't know how big the the Muslim population is in Malta. Uh, I know Malta is majority Catholic, right? I think I've seen like some some Maltese churches and stuff, like some of the stone churches, uh, like the really old ones. They look really beautiful. Malta in general is is a really beautiful country, and for some reason uh, there are a lot of Shiba Inus. Like I know like several. Shiba Inu breeders, specifically on Malta, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's so random, like this Japanese dog breed does become an internet meme for some reason. A bunch of the breeders of it are on Malta, this tiny island nation. So many people here have Shiba Inus. Yeah, why? Why? Like, why? What? What? That's so, it's so random. It's so interesting. Um... Yeah, Shibas are cool. Shibas are awesome, though. I've made some Swedish kings. There's only one of them, though. <laughs> okay, let's get back to it. Uh, they would buy the following you, a complete loser and shithead with a bad attitude and even worse content, while they have the audacity to be good-looking and probably sensitive and misunderstood. <laughs> You don't say you're getting drunk enough to wonder if it's a good idea to reach out to your followers through a story post to see if anyone's nearby. Actually, that's not true. You don't wonder if it's a good idea. You're perfectly aware that it isn't. What you mean is, you're getting drunk enough to know it's a bad idea, but do it anyway. Why waste another second bullshitting yourself about it? You know you're going to end up caving yourself in the mental... Caving to yourself in the mental debate, so you just cut through the chase and just do it. You prepare a cunning thirst trap and post it to your story. Check your DMs and within minutes you collect about a dozen messages all from the usual simpy suspects. Guys you were expecting a reply from no matter what, where they live. Really predictable shit going on here. If any of my followers live on this piece of shit island hit me up. Something about this dude's face and demeanor pisses you off for reasons you can't put your finger on. So you block him. Most of these replies are completely useless. Head ripping. I'm in Brazil, but visiting as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Why does he have a banana on his head? Oh, uh, I love this. There's some. I want to like make this an emote in the chat or something. <laughs> uh, hang on. One guy says he's from Brooklyn, Massachusetts. That's not far off, actually. Something to work with there. Brookline? Is that that's not how it's spelled, is it? Brook Brookline? Oh no, there is a Brook 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 Brookline, Massachusetts. An affluent town in Norfolk County, Massachusetts. Oh, Brooklyn is the borough in New York City. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I was. I don't know. I think I confused it with Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. I don't know why I thought they were. Anyway. <laughs> Much depends on how invested this guy is. Maybe you can rope him into coming to the island soon. Fair schedules vary throughout the years, but there's practically always one departing from Hyannis, which is probably about an hour drive from Brooklyn. Brookline. Maybe I could even make the trip today if his desperation level is high enough. Then it all depends on whether he's worth bothering with, doesn't it? It's quite a puzzle thinking about the factors in play. If he's hot enough, then his desperation index could be very low. They might be like pulling teeth getting him down here, which would kill the impulsive allure of this dumb shit stunt. But if he's a ghoul, you could probably get him to swim here. <laughs> But then, if that's the case, why would you go through such lengths to debase yourself like this? Why indeed? It's an internally rhetorical question, of course you would. Your thoughts turn again to your idle, dear, sweet post. A complete swamp goblin of a man, and yet if you were in your kitchen right now, you have no doubt you'd ravage the poor fellow. He would probably be afraid of you. It would be better if he were afraid of you. <laughs> Your secret wish is that 
One day you hope to strike sexual intimidation into the heart of an American singer, songwriter, rapper, record producer, and actor known for his introspective songwriting and laconic vocal style. Not that you would ever make such controversial remarks out loud, not again anyway. Not if you hope to have a brand someday. Fuck it, you say, you only get to ruin your life once, or sometimes, many times, in rapid succession. But if that's the case, you like to think of it all as one long grand act of ruination. And if you're actually really committed to daisy chaining a series of life hobbling mistakes together, you might as well make it count. Brooklyn is not far. Yeah. It's a drive-in than a ferry. Oh uh, yeah. I've never been there. Okay, I don't really care. Kate, care. Oh my god, stop fucking typing, Percy. Clown. God, lol. Over there writing like a goddamn graduate thesis, like a complex, well articulated response is gonna mean fucking shit to me. Okay. Insane. Who do you think you are? I don't know. Just a guy who likes your content? My content is fucking trash, and now you know it. Not really. You look good. Percy. Percy. Dumb name. Sounds like the name of a cuck. I'm not really getting this. Do you really mean all these insults? Or is this part of, um... Is this what you're into? Jesus Christ, Percy, shut the fuck up. Still have no idea if this is a good idea or if you're wasting my fucking time. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna choose not to take it on this personal since you can't possibly know enough about me to form meaningfully negative opinions. Holy fucking shit, we got a lady killer over here. Percy, I'm flying through the panties. They just keep getting soaked due to your armor's repartee. Oh. Moron. Can you just send me a pic already? Oh, uh, yeah. Hang on. This self is corny as fuck. Fail. Bad. Sorry? Those ellipses you put before sorry are also corny. Don't get cute with me. Like, fuck, I'm not getting it. Do you think you're useful or whatever? Or charming? Like, you don't matter? Like, you don't matter, you little idiocancrasies. Idiocancrasies. Thancrasies. I don't speak English. I don't... I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm... I'm just, um... I, I need to go back to English class. Idiosyncrates? Idiosyncrates? Why does, why does English have a letter that can be two different sounds? Either K or S? You already have letters for K and S. And quirks of personality do not matter. Take off your fucking shirt. Hang on. Just gonna scroll ahead a little bit. Okay, it's fine. There's no TOS. Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Lol. Barf. Um, well, you aren't gonna upset me. I get it now. You just like talking shit. It's your thing, that's cool. Go ahead and tell me how bad I look, I can take it. No, cuck. I'm not fucking with you, you literally just made me laugh so hard I puked in my macaroni. <laughs> okay, that's not true, but good one. You did, that dumb fuck face, your simp ass fuckboy Casanova face, OMG. Dipshit, you're so dumb. I allowed so much I barfed. Also, I drank too much. Well, you definitely do seem drunk, but I still don't believe you. I don't think you barfed. I think you're saying that for comical effect. You own me, if you will. What was the bio? Did he have a bio? I don't think... No, he doesn't have a bio. Hmm... Um, 
to own me, if you will. Fist emoji, squirt emoji. Ah, uh, smiley. Not his bio? Oh, the bio of the account? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm not sure she had one. I don't think she had one either. Uh, no. Damn, you got the account? Congrats. Suck so bad, Percy. Percy. Little shirtless baby boy from Brooklyn. Percy. Simpy Percy nips you. Mama would be so proud of you and your cute little nippings. <laughs> Check this out, stupid. Probably just Google that. Nope. Look. Lol. Okay, I believe you. Good one. You uh, alright though? No, man. This isn't happening. What is it? We aren't bonding over my fucking macaroni puke. Like, this isn't a moment we're having. We aren't becoming friends. You aren't going to fuck me. Bye, purse. <laughs> uh, balls. The last post was balls. Uh, the shenanigan is complete, you suppose. It can be a rush to push, push shit like this for reasons you couldn't really explain. The rush is always short-lived. What soon fills the void it leaves behind is that unmistakable feeling of self-loathing and disgust. It's all a joke, isn't it? Your life, your brand... And to think of it, you're not sure which of those two words is more deserving of derisive quotes. Maybe your quest to build a brand is childish, more... Vain Hang on, I have to put glasses on. <laughs> okay, that is better. I was wondering why I was having such a hard time reading. I think it's genuinely because I'm not wearing my glasses and the screen is a bit far away. <laughs> oh, okay, that's, l that's a bit less blurry now. More vainglorious clans seeking, contributing to the loud and labored rasp of Western civilization's last dinosaurial gasp. Maybe you should just delete all your accounts. It's not the first time you've had this thought, but it will be the last. Uh, profile picture. Hang on. If I save. Uh, oh, let's. <laughs> I'll scroll back to when you can see your profile picture. Should be... Here it is. Uh, screenshot this. Just hit hit uh, print screen and then tell me when you when you've done it. When I can click next. Thank you. Okay, now how do I... Now that would save over it. Resume? No. How do I load? Main menu. Load. Okay. Last thing you have before you pass out, that is... Bonk. Raise the VGA mode. Spooky music. Jubilite Manifesto. Is it Bush want to buy bubble tea? <laughs> no, it's not Bush want to buy bubble tea. Depends on the store, I guess. If it's $30, it's a little, bu little bourgeois, but... If it's, you know, not $30, what am I saying? Uh, $30. No, if it's like $5, then, I'm oh, sorry, I was thinking of 
Swedish crowns. Uh, if it's like between three and five dollars, that's a bit much for bubble tea. If it's like two dollars, that's fine. That's not bourgeois. If you're paying five dollars for one thing of bubble tea, that's bourgeois though. Sorry, sorry, not sorry, but that's uh, you know. Your work is unfinished. <laughs> that was so abrupt. Oh my god. That was a hell of a dream. You haven't had one like that in years. Not since all that terrible stuff was happening in your life. Not since your dad was sick and you were deliriously hammering away at your manifesto. It's not surprising the dream included both. You hate dreaming about him, always with the body horror shit. Hang on. I have to move. Uh, 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 I've been sitting in the same position for too long. Okay. Then at the end, the strange man floating in space, the ephemeral muse himself, could he really be back? Wait, what time is it? Oh god, it's dark. How long did you black out? Looks like Abby's already tried messaging you a couple of times. Your head hurts and your mouth still tastes like cheese flavored barf. Wow, you look like fucking shit. Yeah. Thanks. Everything okay? I puked in a pot of macaroni and fell asleep for a few hours. Now it's dark, really productive day all around. Oh yeah, I also have some vague recollection of tormenting a semi-local simp who slid into my DMs. Lol, slid? I saw your thirst trap, fool. It seemed unusually desperate even by your standards. It made me worry. So you started pelting my unconscious body with chat invites. It's cool, you're my mom now. It's cool, you're my mom now. Okay. Well, somebody has to be. The hag of physically birthed you fuck off, right? Fucking off was mutual. When was the last time she talked to you? Not since the incident. Works fine for me. You can be my mom. You're hotter and have much more clout anyway. Cheer too. As if I could spare a single precious second of my day for ugly bitches. LMEO. Whereas ugly men are obviously a different story. Obviously. Suppose my loan's still your lock screen. Yeah. You've got the shit all backwards. The nasty, not safe for work art should be your lock screen, and post should be the unlock. So much more embarrassing and obscene if anybody catches you in your public with your post on your phone. So you've said. You're right, of course, but I don't give a shit. I love him. He's a sublime gargoyle, an exquisite heap of human garbage, a perfect affront to all my senses. <laughs> Your taste is so bad. You're completely unfathomable. It's like you need a zero or ten and that's it. Anything between you are like completely asexual. Not inaccurate. What about this symbol you're toying with? How do you look? 
what about oh what about this thing you were toying with how do you look average a little below maybe real uncanny valley stuff total standard reply boy fair Re standard reply boy fair might have been nice though i don't remember hang on i'm gonna get a pillow uh, uh, i'm gonna mute my microphone because i'm gonna be moving around Uh, my old age, my brittle bones. <sighs> Lol, they're always nice. Doesn't mean shit. I know. You said he's local. You going anywhere with this or pulling the plug? The latter, I'm sure. Maybe you should modify your standards a bit and reel him in. We're in fucking quarantine lockdown, Abby. So, this thing is all kind of overblown. We aren't supposed to, like, go to concerts and shit. And get sneezed on by huge groups of people or whatever. I don't see much harm in hanging out with a few people on an individual basis from time to time. And by this, I assume you mean... What you think I haven't been keep... What you think I think... What you think I haven't been keeping myself entertained? I still have people over all the time. Pretty dumb shit, Abs. What, you're surprised? You hear you're still an atrocious slut? Not at all, but your parents are supposed to be the ones claimed by the boomer remover, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Uh, I'll follow you. Uh, I'll follow the, the account. Mm. Z clown boner 420. Hmm? It says it doesn't exist. Are you sure you're spelling it right? Z69 Clown Boner 420. Z69 Clown Boner 420. Are you sure? Oh yeah, there it is. Wait, that's not you. Oh, oh, wait, 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 hang on. Zed. He's not gonna learn. Nope. It says this account doesn't exist. I think he misspelled it. <laughs> What's blue anon? Blue on on. We believe the moon landing was real, but the moon is not. We believe Joe Biden is working with the secret cabal to combat shape shifting mimes who are silently taking over the government. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's a bot. Hang on. Bet. Fucking bots! I keep I keep getting bots in my channel. It's so annoying. You want to buy followers? Like no, no, I don't want to buy followers. Why would anyone want to buy followers? No offense to you guys who are followers. I'm not saying why would anyone want to buy you. I would love to buy you if slavery was still legal, but it's not because of Abraham Lincoln. So that's why I can't buy followers. Can't just die off before take all their money. Please don't do that to me. I'll be fine. I'll get a little cough and that's it. Big deal. 
Oh, wait. Maybe then I can infect them? Oh, actually, now you're using your fucking brain for once. Oh, it was, oh, the username was too long. Uh, that's why it was unclaimed. I was so surprised when I when I looked it up. It's like, oh, the account doesn't exist. But it's because you can't make it. It's because it's too long. Okay. Uh, seriously, though, when's the last time you hooked up with anybody? I seem to remember you were busy, what, last summer? I guess that the la that was the last time. I haven't really been in the mood since then. You kept updating me on the revolving door of weird dudes you were picking up from the restaurant. I missed that. The stories were so good. Yeah, it was a real circus in here for a while. But I don't need shit like that in my life at the moment. Did your boss even know you were picking up her gross male customers? As far as I know, she never found out. It doesn't matter, she's dead now anyway. What? Did you hear of something, R? No, it's just the reality I've chosen to believe and pretty sure I'm quitting that job and even if she reappears, I don't give a fuck anymore. Good move. I highly recommend not having a job and never planning to have one in the future ever. You're rich. I also highly recommend being rich. I'm working on it. Not hard enough, apparently. You got a straight shot to riches right here, bitch. Just marry into my fortune. What even to make you sign a prenup? That's super generous, but no thanks. I want to make my millions the honest way. I'm helping you rip off your parents. Yeah, but all that does is give me their money. Where does that, where does that leave you within the marriage certificate? Certify. Uh huh. Oh, that's easy. You'll just give it to me because you wanna. I mean, yeah, probably. They all miss that restaurant. If you never go wait tables there again. I won't. It's where we met, remember? Yup. Why didn't you pick me up that day, huh? Why'd you have to friend so me so hard? Fucking brutal. You're an ugly rich cunt, and I probably thought you looked smelly that day. Bullshit. You dragged every sewer creature you waited on back to your place. Lol, and you have the audacity to call me a slut. You are. So are you. I'm really not a slut per se, so much as a person with an especially punitive set of self-harming patterns. Well, if you hate yourself so much, why not um, self-harm a bit with me sometime? Because I'm a filthy homophobe, this is a matter of public record, remember? Lol, no you're not. Sure I am, I hate gays. No you don't. Well you're gay and I hate you. I'm not even gay. Gay enough. Don't erase my bisexuality. I'll erase whatever the fuck I want. Wow, I like it. Whoever actually slept together at fucking nightly, your bisexuality, you become a permanent lesbian. Whoa, Z. This is getting out of hand. I will never ha this will never happen, Abby. I am deeply committed to being a problematically homophobic heterosexual piece of shit who sometimes enjoys the company of ambiguously reptilian men. Besides, you're my mom, remember? Aha, uh -huh. oh yeah. Can't exactly fuck my mom now, can I? I'm deep enough into cancellation purgatory as it is. Yeah, I would never do that to you. Ask my daughter, you are my responsibility. Hey, seeing as we now clearly no longer care about quarantine, so that I can catch this disease ASAP and kill my parents, why don't you come over tonight? I can cook something for you. Probably something better than macaroni barf? I don't know. Come on. My place is huge and expensive and extremely empty. Doesn't that sound better than wallowing in your nasty little depression cave? I guess. Maybe we could snap some content by the beach tomorrow. You know the simps always love the beach shit. Yeah, but I don't think I'll be putting out content like that anymore. I'm thinking of revamping the whole brand. Oh? Yeah, I just had this crazy fucking dream. It was so wild. I think my subconscious was trying to tell me something important. I don't know if it's a good idea technically, but I think I'm obligated to do it now. Shit was too powerful to just write off. Do what? Remember my manifesto? Oh god, that thing? Yeah, I know. It's all pretty out there, but I think there's something to work with there. Well, 
If it gets you to come over here and helps you pull yourself together, then I'm all for it. I support you no matter what. What a pal. True test of friendship is if you can humor you can humor each other's manifestos. Well, uh, you humor mine, don't you? Oh yeah. I'm all about fucking uh, the truth of Jim Coo's Jim Cook's secret romance. Lol, G Cook actually, but yes, thank you for your crucial support. I will say your place is the fucking bomb. Do you think your parents will vacation there again this summer? Or are they gonna... Are they Rona spooked like everyone else? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they hunkered down at the family compound all summer. Good riddance, if so. Still amazing me they're okay with you just squatting their $10 million vacation home, like, permanently. What are they gonna do about it? And I have the keys and I'm a grown woman and who does as she pleases. No arguing with that. But they must feel like they're getting a great return on that Harvard biz degree they bought you. Yeah, fuck that. I'm doing some numbers, motherfuckers. My brand is popping. Something tells me they're unimpressed by your meteorically accumulated clown. Yeah, they take a huge boomer shit all over it any chance they get. I really wonder what they, like, wanted? What were they picturing? I'd leave the school and slide into an Amazon VP spot or some shit? Probably could have made something like that happen if you were so inclined. I mean, maybe? What the fuck do they think business is? I'm doing business here. People like my brand. This is how you make shit happen. Like, I can build on this to do whatever. Like, later. I didn't even need my fucking degree. At least you finished it. Which mainly served the purpose of starving off their massive disappointment in you. Instead, they're only mildly disappointed. Yeah, I'm sorry about all that. Sorry, I ended up saving them a lot of money by psychologically imploding half my way through. MIT is actually super expensive if you weren't aware. Oh, yeah, one time my parents looked into buying it. I mean, <laughs> I meant tuition, you buffoon. I know, God, Z, remember we promised to always know when we're joking? Oh yeah, anyway, it's not like they had the kind of money your parents did to throw at an expensive education. I had to work hard for that, so it reminded me often. I'll be an eternal failure to them, which means they're failures too. Oh well, the problem half solved itself, so who really gives a fuck? Huh? I strongly recommend having at least one dead parent. Oh. Two is the idea, but what can you do? Aside from contemplating casual biological warfare? Yeah, my mom would never succumb to the Rona, though. Not her style. Still, so funny to me that your plan to get away from all that life drama was to come here, of all places. All melodramatically, like, fuck this life, I'm running away to an island. Which makes you think... Which makes you think of, like, a remote island in the Pacific or something? Yeah, I mean, that was the plan. At one point, I was looking at Guam. Then I settled on Fiji as the ideal getaway place, but that didn't really pan out. Fiji sounds nice. Yeah, Fiji's the fucking shit. <laughs> then you just hopped on a ferry to the nearest island possible. It was cheap. Poor, remember? Lol, you think you're still... Do you think she still keeps up with you, like spies in your accounts? I'm sure mom has no idea that you didn't exist. It was almost a moot point, though. Before my insane dream, I was thinking about just deleting them all. What? I just get that way sometimes. Aside from my crazy ideas, which should probably never see the light of day. I'm actually just so fucking boring. No, you're so funny. You're such an untapped resource. It's a crime you've been going to waste. I know you've been through some shit, but there are ways to rebound from that. Yeah, but I still agonize stupidly and wonder if I should just question the source of this torment. The internet is fucking insane. It just shits, sits there as a... Bedeviling? Bedeviling temptation? I don't know that word. This massive ominously humming well of satanic potential just beckoning you constantly. And if you... If you aren't using it in some way to make something of yourself or elevate your identity somehow, it makes you feel like you're wasting a huge opportunity of something. You're even wasting your life. It's like you were just saying, like, I'm so funny. Therefore, it's a waste if I just fucking log off. But a waste of what? 
The system makes me feel like I'm wasting a resource by withholding myself from the system. What if the system was wasting me? Damn. Maybe I should listen to the sane voices in my head instead of the insane ones. Like, forget that weird dream. Just delete all this shit and try to get my life together in a more normal way. That's all totally fair. I hear you, but... Even if you wanted to go full normie, it's not like society is even functioning normally now anyway. God damn it. Yeah, you're right. Not trying to invalidate you here, just saying like, wait, hang on. Before I decide on anything, I want to show you something. Oh shit, you just follow me on main? Yeah. Jerry ready to take this kind of heat? I did it, just after we talked, I felt like a fucking tool. Nobody even noticed yet, lol. Maybe will never even come up. It's definitely gonna come up. It's 100% gonna come up. I'm, I'm coupling that right now. <laughs> yeah, you're probably paranoid, bitch. So am I, maybe. Probably been overthinking this. Yeah, that just convinces me even more that this is definitely gonna, gonna result in something. Also, I decided something else. If you really do decide to relaunch your brand, even if it's a bunch of crazy shit, we'll give you some shoutouts. I'll give you some shoutouts. I don't even care if people think it's weird. That's what friends do. They support each other. Wow. Don't worry about figuring out figuring out now though. Just come over. I'm bored and I miss you and you need to eat something real for a change. Well, alright. I'll head over. Yay! Oh, but don't drive drunk. Get a lift or something. Or I can just pick you up. Don't worry, mom. I'm fine. The nap sewed me up. You promise? Yeah. Okay. Heading out. Still shouldn't drive. Kill the video chat. It leaves a loud silence behind. Maybe it's the sound of the ominously humming well of satanic potential you just described to your friend. A sound you can hear all the time, but only now are paying close attention to. Everything you said to her was true, of course. You believe it with every fiber of your being. The internet is evil. You have always known this. The louder the silence gets, the more you begin to wonder if it's the only thing you've ever truly believed with any real passion. Aside from all this, of course. Alright, maybe you aren't as sober as you led Abby to believe. <laughs> you should be good to drive. You are not good to drive. Grab your manifesto. You need to spend a few days brushing up on the material if you're serious about this. But you're still not sure if you are yet. I want her to bring it along and start reading. As you exit your apartment, you can't shake the feeling that everything is about to change. Maybe it's the fact that you haven't been out in a long time, but leaving your depression nest tonight carries the uncanny feeling of stepping into the unknown. Glad you took your manifesto, if only because leaving empty handed would have made you feel vulnerable. As it stands, you suppose it is the closest thing to a weapon you've ever had. Animation. I knew it. Shit, don't, oh, oh God.
Can they track police cars? They must have trackers on those things, right? She get out. <laughs> the crown emoji. Drop this queen. Wow. That escalated so quickly. Interlude one. An interlude. So, you just killed a cop and dumped his car in the ocean. Nice going, genius. Cold hands of justice will close around your throat soon enough. Whatever it is, that justice even means these days. Maybe justice is what happens whenever people with power manage to punish whoever was trying to fight back a little for once. Maybe that's why you need a little more power of your own. Enough power to claim justice is what's happening when you're the one settling the score. Maybe what you need is even simpler than that. Maybe what you need is the power of choice. So what will you do, Zen? You're a fugitive now. And it seems only two choices are available. That's right, her name was Zen. Or Jen. You can turn yourself in. Or you can run. Run like the wind and hide. Find Abby, dry yourself off, bury yourself in your work, and figure it all out later. Which will it be? <laughs> it's actually giving me a choice. It's not giving me a choice. That's, no, it's not. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Lol, sorry, I should have mentioned. The ability to make meaningful choices in this story can only be unlocked by a true successor. Unfortunately, that's not you. Not quite yet, at least. Don't worry though, I'll check in later when you've made a little more headway with this mess you've got yourself into. Till then, do whatever comes naturally, I guess. I'm sure it'll all work out, Elamio. Alright, dickhead. <laughs> well, that's interesting, so it's gonna... It's gonna turn from a visual novel to like an actual like... Like you can actually like choose your own story later or something? I don't know. I was fully expecting this to just be a pure visual novel. I, I guess we don't. I guess we don't know yet. Maybe it's maybe that's just bullshit. Then soaked and freezing alone at the steamboat wharf at night. We just checked Uber. No drivers are currently available, which you could have guessed might be the case this hour during the pandemic. Maybe you don't fully think of this plan through. No, I shouldn't second guess what you did just because of some momentary sogginess. You review the facts. A nasty cop fired a bullet at an unarmed drunk girl who just crashed into a tree. The bullet missed but traveled directly through her painstakingly written manifesto. Really might as well have been like taking a bullet straight through the heart. 
What sort of author would you be if you didn't feel this way? You did what you had to be done. You did what had to be done. Checked the dead cop for a body camera, but didn't appear to be wearing one. You're not sure if the sleepy MPD even uses those. Thought they were sleepy. At least you guess all police forces in quiet summer colonies seem sleep until the bullets start flying toward drunk girls onto the teeth of manifestos. That squad car surely had a dashboard camera, so you had to do something. What were you gonna do? Shoot the gas tank and blow up the car? It probably only works in movies. And the water is right there. You're completely surrounded by this stuff, actually. Now the only evidence linking you to the scene is your wrecked car, registered to your name in the immediate vicinity of a dead cop without a squad car. Okay, that sounds pretty incriminating when you put it that way. You'll have to think about how to handle that. More importantly, you really need to get out of here. You check Uber one more time, now it says there's a ride available, six minutes away, that's a relief. Give some time to improvise an alibi. Dial 911 and think about what you're gonna say before hitting the dial button. Dispatcher picks up and asks about your emergency. You try to sound calm because it's not a real emergency, not when it comes to the role you're playing right now. You're still cozy warm in your apartment. You don't know, you just don't know where your car is. Hey, uh, I don't know if this is a real emergency, I just didn't know where else to call. I'm pretty sure my car was stolen today. Dispatcher goes through the motions, asking for your name and other relevant information. No reason to hold anything back. You want them to know who you are so they can rule you out when they find the body and the wreck. And then continue weaving your improvised story. This is such a terrible idea. This is... This is not gonna work. Okay, I have, I'm gonna go get something to drink. Stretch my legs a little bit. So enjoy this beautiful uh, cello, I guess, is what's playing in the background. Okay, I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Hi, Belly John the Destroyer. I, uh, I'm having a, a Coke with just, just a, just a little, little bit of rum. Just a li little bit of the Havana Club. Ah, uh, it's so good. Like, it's actually so delicious. No, 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 no. Havana Club uh, three, three years. Light rum. No, no, I, uh, no, I, w I wouldn't mix a, a ten year rum with Coke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think it might have been my abusive ex boyfriend. He's been snooping around lately. He has his pair of cassette of keys. The fucker never gave them back to me. Dispatcher asked about him. Damn, he didn't think this far ahead. You continue spinning. Oh, his name? Uh, sorry, I don't know if it's... I'm pretty scared of him. I'm not sure if I want to be on record writing him out. Don't you have, like, some witness protection shit I can do? Dispatcher explains that isn't really how that works, but they can send an officer over in the morning so you can file a police report. <laughs> oh, no, that's a terrible idea. Last time I drank rum, I uh, drank half a bottle of Captain Morgan Spice Drum. <laughs> mm, I don't really drink Spice Rum. I don't really drink at all. I drink very rarely. Maybe once or twice a month. And even then, I only drink a... Like, this is like... A finger of uh, light rum in a pretty tall glass of coke and like this is probably the only drink I'll have this month so yeah I uh, I don't drink a lot <laughs> actually, I actually blacked out no I've never blacked out from drinking That sounds pretty bad, though. <laughs> oh, wow. No, I don't think... Um, you really need to end this call soon before the wheels completely fall off this attempted alibi. Hey, can I text photos to you? To 911 or the police? How do I do that? Dispatcher provides you with a number to text, and you hang up. Your mind races for the right play, you panic and send the most recent photo which comes to mind. Oh. Fuck. Not the guy from Bro Brookline. He didn't do anything. He was he was nice to you. Oh no. Oh god, this is gonna go so bad that probably was not the best idea maybe you should have just hung up after saying you were scared to give his name but you just had to go further with the bullshit witness protection program what the hell was that oh well it's done it's a small wrinkle in your alibi you think you've easily done enough to leave the police feeling confused about what happened tonight no they're obviously gonna fucking figure it out and like, is the dash cam like only stored locally? Is it not like sent anywhere? And is there usually a partner in the car? I don't know. This feels too easy.
your Uber's here. Not a moment too soon. You're fe freezing and exhausted. Somehow, role-playing on the phone with a first responder has been more psychologically draining than, ex than exchanging gunfire with one. she gonna tell Abby what happened? Probably realistic depiction of a person doing dumb shit under stress. Yeah, no, I definitely think it's realistic. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, totally. Whoa, I can't believe you actually came. I've just been watching my phone all night, waiting for you to tell you, tell me you can't make it after all. Get in here. There's plenty to eat. I made. Z, are you okay? Why are you so wet? You look soaked. Oh, uh... Yeah, I fell in a puddle on the way over. <coughs> Lol, you were right. I was too drunk to drive, so I just took an Uber. Hard to find a ride this time of night. Oh yeah, I bet. So you... Fell in a puddle? And got soaked head to toe. It was a big fucking puddle. Jesus. Why don't you go clean up? And grab anything from my room to change into something dry. Yeah, dry sounds good. Okay, I'll be right there. Be right here. I'll heat you up some dinner when you get back. Tell me, oh god, you poor thing. You're having a rough day, aren't you? Don't worry, you made the right call coming over. I'll take care of you. Thanks, Mom. Wait, what is that? Oh, it's the manifesto with the bullet hole. Oh, shit. Can't bring yourself to tell her yet. Tonight was too much. You just need an evening to unwind without making Abby freak out over your cop murder. Sure to get around to telling her later, but if you can think of the right way to break it to her. To get a friend to saddle her with the disastrous karma, you can't seem to avoid stockpiling. Perhaps you aren't stockpiling karma so much as dharma. Maybe it's some chaotic juxtaposition of the two concepts. <laughs> Maybe you've been key mashing your whole way through life, and only now is your soul reaping the autocorrected correspondences consequences of this haphazard practice. Can I ditch this? Huh. Stashed in one of the bottom drawers underneath some junk. She'll probably never look in here. Guess I could have tossed the gun too, sent at the water grave along with a squad car, but now you're technically a fugitive. Just the future even less than you did at the start of the day. No guarantee that you won't need this again later. Didn't ask for this shit. Yeah, I guess you shouldn't have been driving drunk, but what should that mean? You're suddenly dodging bullet from one of MPD's finest. Whatever, the pig is dead. You know the matter isn't done with. You know the matter isn't done with you by a long shot. We'll keep haunting you unless you start fighting back. This was the gift the departed officer gave you tonight. An albatross will hang around your neck for the rest of your life. You suddenly decide not to see it that way. It's a true gift he gave you. The true gift he gave you was resolve. You're so pissed about it. Now you know you're on the right track. Your ambivalence about rebooting your brand is completely gone now. In this place is the same rage and disgust which led you to the write your manifesto in the first place. Rage and disgust for injustice for the systemic evils of the nation. For the weakness and compliance which quelled the righteous outrage of its citizens. And now, several years after its completion, there's even more to be mad about. Persecution from the miserable wretches online who cancelled you. The ensuing mental breakdown which caused your life to spiral till you ended up on this island. And now, on top of all that, an almost certain shitstorm brewing from law enforcement once they start piecing together what happened tonight. 
Well, they can do their worst. All the dirtbags out there can have at you soon enough because you won't be hiding for much longer. Your brand is about to get a very serious facelift and once you step into the spotlight again, from now on people are going to find it a lot harder to ignore what you have to say. You and Abby have a lot of work to do tomorrow. Jeez. I don't even know what to think of this. And you, you know, I was thinking when um, when the uh, the cop was pointing a gun at her, like she was clearly driving drunk. She crashed her car. Cop walked up to her window with with his gun, I think. And then she reached for the book that was on the seat next to her. And when, when, you know, when she did that, you know, I was thinking like, you know, this, the, like the cop could have just shot her right there. Like just her slightly reaching over could have just been it. Um, but yeah, then she fucking jumped him, which, and she got out of the car. Although I guess she, he asked her to. But yeah, no, she fucking jumped him, which is pretty pretty stupid thing to do. Your name is Abby. It's pronounced exactly as it's spelled, so that's made life pretty easy for you. Another thing that's made life easy is the fact that your parents are rich. Rich doesn't really do it justice, though. Most people who vacation on this island for the summer are rich relative to the average American citizen. Your parents are billionaires. Not the kind of barely qualify. One billion has ten digits, but they didn't seem content to stop at ten. A society was more than happy to oblige. They own the house you live in, which represents a minuscule rounding error in the grand scheme of their total net worth. It's easy to forget about most of the year, and they probably would if you didn't live here year round. Growing up, you formed memories of this place strictly as a summer home. After college, you decided to move in here permanently. Mostly because it keeps them out of your hair. It's not the most convenient place to visit, so they never bother until the summer rolls around. And this year, it's looking more and more like the summer, as you once understood it, never will. It's roughly 9am and you have just woken up. Later than yesterday, but that's okay. You were late last night tending to your beleaguered friend, and even popular influencers need to sleep in sometimes. Your bedroom is tidy, and you always notice if it isn't. You make sure to keep... Get that way to reflect well on your brand whenever this room is used as a backdrop for your content. Ordinarily, you'd reach for your smartphone first thing in the morning after an extensive routine of cooking breakfast, exercising and feeding your beautiful horse. But right after all, but right after all that, you go for your phone to check on the actions surrounding your exceedingly well-trafficked accounts. For whatever reason, today feels a little different. Instead, you decide to take in the environment. As a thoughtful influencer, you really can't spend too much time tweaking the appearance of the lifestyle you sell to the adoring public. Nothing is left to chance. Your posts are carefully chosen and arranged to broadcast the preferred aesthetic to your crowd. And that aesthetic turns out to be a simple composite of your interests. Which, judging from this wall, appears to be BTS, horses, and, well, that's about it. Your mind is a train that chugs along precisely two narrow rails. You'd almost be embarrassed about the single-mindedness of your enjoyments. What can you say? You like what you like, and you make no excuses if your fans, fans are nothing if not supportive of these twin obsessions. Get a little closer to a hanging graphic depicting of your favorite boys. Art is basking in their glow every now and then. BTS is an extremely popular K-pop group, and you are a vocal member of ARMY, which is what the fandom calls itself. You estimate you spend the majority of your waking hours contemplating these seven extraordinarily beautiful boys. Your bio says you're bisexual, but you often like to joke in your post that you like women as well as exactly seven men, and that's it. <laughs> you're also an avid Jikook truther, which is to say you strongly believe Jimin and Jungkook are secretly in love with each other. Don't consider this a theory or even a particularly well-kept secret. The evidence is overwhelming. Those who refuse to concede are those stone to are to these stone cold facts are blind delusional charlatans. I don't know enough about K-pop to understand any of this. Even written a manifesto on the subject, which is uh, as you told Z before 
something only crazy people do but you are the one exception to that rule since when it comes to this subject you aren't crazy at all your eyes are wide open your wide open eyes wander to another poster featuring a number of majestic stallions what else is there to say on the matter you just plain fucking love horses enough said yeah you think so horses kick ass the end you meander toward your desk mostly cosmetic and hair supplies live here plus some other silly stuff to keep things fun whenever you stream content from the station little conversation pieces things for your fans to notice and comment on nobody nothing from any fandom you're particularly interested in per se but you are mindful of the interests of your followers I'd like to throw them a little bone here and there <laughs> When you're not streaming or doing yourself up at shoots. Blowing the BGM a little bit. Uh, this here is the main reason you find yourself at this desk. You primarily use this laptop to write your facts. Lately, it's all RPF stories dedicated to exploring the alternate universe lives of your seven favorite boys. Many of these facts get pretty racy. None of your fans have the slightest idea this is one of your hobbies. Keep a pretty tight lid on the habit since it's frowned upon in many fandom circles, to say the least. Truth is, you think you'd get crucified if it got out. You're not much like Z, and you don't throw caution to the wind as she has in the past. Your brand is a tight ship, well, except when it comes to effusively sharing your sexual exploits with followers. In that sense, it's a quite loose ship. When it comes to writing fiction, that's a whole different can of worms and hence will understandably roll if the wrong types of online stores were to be associated with your name. There's your horse, his name is David Hasselhoof. Your parents got him for you as a high school graduation person when he was just a wobbly legged, legged little colt. Legged little colt, legged little colt. <laughs> that makes him almost 10 years old now. When you graduated from Harvard, first thing you did was make plans to transport David to the island where you could reunite with him and tend to him on your own in the summer home. He is by far your favorite family member, the very essence of the quiet strength and loyalty. As for the silly name, it came with a horse. You had never even heard of David Hasselhoff before you got him. You assume it's a pop cultural reference that boomers would get worked up about. We you saw it, who were you to fault them earlier? There, who were you to fault them their references okay. God knows you're prone to indulging the references held dear by you and your peers so you can't possibly begrudge your elders the same joy besides you thought the name was cute your phone is buzzing who could this be oh it's Z starting a video chat not out of the ordinary but quite ridiculous in this context considering she slept in your house last night what up hey you're awake kinda why don't you come downstairs? I'll make you something. Check out this bitch who can't seem to stop feeding me. What did I even do to deserve this bed and breakfast shit? You do realize I suck, right? You've been living a very unhealthy lifestyle. I just want to help you recuperate before you sink back into your den of despair. Mm, I don't know. If I'll be going back anytime soon. Your parents' huge bed is super comfy. I must say I enjoy rolling around on its extravagant expanse, getting my stank all over it. I feel like I'm marking my territory. Ha, <laughs> I'm glad you're amusing yourself in there. I pissed in it, actually, to get the job- really get the job done. Lol, no you didn't. Sure I did. Please tell me you didn't actually pee in my parents' bed. Well, no. Not yet, at least. I do have to pee kinda bad, though. OMFG, will you get the fuck out of there? Come on! We're in the same house, this is dumb. Let's hang out, tell me all about your big plans. Oh yeah, that shit. Almost forgot why I made the harrowing journey to your manor. Yes, I know, you risked life and limb to get here and fell in a huge puddle. I'm hanging up now, calm downstairs. Who's dick do you have to suck to get a mimosa around here? Mine? Well, if I must. If that's how it's gonna be, then your bed and breakfast is about to get a Yelp review for the ages. Hey, why don't you hold off on the booze for a while? It isn't even 10 a.m. yet. Here, I'll fix you some orange juice. What? I thought this was brunch. So you do brunch, right? Yesterday, you were so drunk you were barfing in your macaroni and falling into puddles. Oh, yeah. Just slow down. My parents have a wine cellar, which you can feel free to raid tonight. 
Wow, nice. The uproot just got a lot better. Good enough to bury the tawdry dick sucking lead at least. <laughs> Lol. So, speaking of last night and falling into puddles, what about it? Well, you were completely soaked last night, but I noticed your manuscript was dry. Yeah, um. Okay, so I lost my balance and I could tell I was heading right for that puddle. A huge puddle. Yeah. And I didn't want my think thing to get wet because I like putting just another one would be just a fucking pain. So as I was falling, I used my quarterback arm and like launched it to safety, then splash down I go. I see. Why is there a hole in it? Oh, that, um... That's a hell of a story. It looks like a bullet hole. Yeah, it is. I shot my own fucking manifesto. Huh? You mean last night? No, no. This was like years ago when I finished the thing. Remember my whole mental breakdown? Oh, damn. I mean, yes, you've told me the story, but I guess not all of it. The day I finished that thing, couldn't set it almost exactly when all that was going down. Like when my dad died and I dropped out of school and then completely fell apart and shut all that crazy shit online. I also finished my manifesto and I guess I uh, shot it due to going nuts. Jesus. Well, you're the one who tells me only crazy people write manifestos. Is that really that surprising and pop a cap in my own magnum opus? I guess not. I have to admit, I feel kind of crazy maintaining my own manifesto. I don't think I would ever shoot it. I just, oops. It just means you can't be all that passionate about it. Oh, excuse me, but this is, that is bullshit. I mean, every word of it with all my heart, you should read it. Abs, I'm not reading your sordid K-pop manifesto. Aw, why not? I'm trying to understand your stuff and help you with it. I'm trying to understand your stuff and help you with it. Cause you don't need to sell me on anything. You say that your boys Jim Cook are fucking each other and then I believe you. There's so much to it. Yeah, and I believe it. Just let those boys be in love, you know? Good for them. I don't need it proven through your painstaking academic rigors. Uh, okay, fair enough. Meanwhile, unlike you, I am intellectually curious enough to delve into another woman's delirious manifesto. Oh, you read it? A few pages, that is what little I could glean around the gaping bullet hole. Huh, <laughs> so what do you think? It's... Well, it's unsurprisingly quite intense. I'd expect nothing less. It's also very, um... What? Clown heavy? Yeah, it's all about clowns. Wasn't this all just inspired by your juggalo phase? I don't know about that. There are a lot of inspirational forces that went into this. Mostly all this shit came to me in a series of incredibly psychotic dreams in the run-up to my mental breakdown. That's pretty hardcore. And now you want to turn whatever this is into your new brand? Yep, I'm fully committed to it now on a fucking mission. Well, cool. I mean, I remember you talking about it before, but it was always in the vague context of some crazy thing you wrote. Not something you actually wanted to do something with, so if I'm gonna help you out, maybe you can explain it to me a little more? Mostly it's just a bunch of revolutionary rhetoric about how America and capitalism sucks and we should be destroyed. Naturally. But the socialist, pa uh, socialist rhetoric is repackaged to be, like, super clowny. Well, who doesn't love a nice clown? Fucking nobody. So that's it? Lots of radical left-wing philosophy, plus, like, everyone gets to be a clown? Basically, there's a lot more to it. There's also tons of lore. Lore? Yeah, that's what my feverish dreams provided, mostly. It's so much shit. Talk about where these ideas come came from. The Jubilites originated on the planet Wimsife. Whoa, a planet? So Jubilites are alien clowns? Yeah, well, they were. Your civilization died millions of years ago, and their founder has been communicating to me through their dreams. Not literally, I mean, I know they're just dreams, but that's what the lore says. Wimsy... Wimsify. That's how it's pronounced, but it's spelled Wimsify. Wimsify. Well, lol, cool. 
I didn't know it was this deep. I guess this was a whole creative writing project then, not just a crazy manifesto. Oh no, it still is crazy as fuck, but yeah, it runs very deep. I think with my new brand, I'll just release the whole thing sequentially, like in little bits, a few pages at a time. Okay, so where do we start? Well, obviously the first thing I'm going to need is a new clown sona. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, clowns are fun as shit. That's the whole point of them. Hello, meow. That's how I envision rebooting my brand. I just start the fuck over. Then I come out with my clown sona. I'm like, hey, this is me now. I'm a fucking clown. And I do a bunch of photo shoots and that's my starting content. Once I establish myself that way, then I start rolling out this serialized manifesto content. Like, start pitching that to people to see if I can drag more enthusiastic new clowns into my tent. This sounds great. I can help you come out with a clown sona. Maybe later I can make one too. Oh, I'd expect nothing less. You'd make such a lovely jubilee. Ow, oh, flattery, flattery will get you everywhere. You better, bitch. <laughs> Lol, how about after breakfast we head up to my vanity mirror? We can give you a whole glow up. A clown up. Hell yeah. This needs to be better than my old juggler clown sona. What did that look like? Do you have any photos? Probably. It just looked like some edgy teen piss. You don't need to see that shit. It will c contaminate our assaults. Didn't you also cosplay a long time ago? You should be an old hand at this. Maybe you don't even need my help. Yes, I did when I was a kid, but you don't have nearly the amount of gray makeup it would take to duplicate those results. Huh? Never mind, we won't be speaking of that. Just want to make some cool clown shit happen here. I think I want to do something with Z's. Z's? Like my name? Oh yeah! Hmm. Yeah, let me try something. Oh, actually, that's fucking sick. You like it? Yeah, I do. I have for a ridiculous bimbo, you can be a genius sometimes. I mean, I did graduate from Harvard, you know. Yeah, by fucking all the professors, right? Well, yes, but isn't that what a genius would do? Yeah, I rest my case. Here, let me mess with this. Mess with this look some more. Aw, look at you. This is so cute. It's not supposed to be cute, though. It's supposed to be badass. Oh, well, that's. Well, it's that too, but mostly it's cute because I know who's underneath. Oh my god. What? I don't know, maybe my clown sona is working too well. You're already hitting on me. Hell <laughs> me, oh, but I always do that. I know. Now I've added clown fermo to the equation. Could be dangerous. I feel like I'm giving Z like a semi uh, uh, moist critical <laughs> voice. <laughs> like I'm just, I, I hear myself slipping into doing an impression of, uh, of critical <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I think it's just how she talks. Hmm, perhaps. So is that it? You think you're done? With the face, yeah. But obvious I need some new ensembles. None of your clothes are gonna cut it because you're an absurd giant. And I don't want to go back to my place anytime soon because... Well, I just don't. We can always go shopping this week. More places are open for business than you would think. Yeah. What about a name? What? Doesn't your clown son need a clowny name? Um, no, I think I just keep my name since it's already a name. I gave myself to replace my parent given name. I'll rebrand and all, but I won't keep name hopping like a fool. I guess that makes sense. Some more later will link my new brand with my controversial past, but I don't even really care at this point. I can take their best shot, and I'm not running anymore. Am I allowed to make up a clowny name when I make up a clown sona? Of course. That is strongly encouraged to all those who choose to clown up. Oh, I know what I'll go with. My old screen name when I was a kid. Abla... Ablapai. Oh, I see. Well, now who's the one being fucking cute? Um, I guess it was me when I was 10 years old and playing Neopets, but also, it's still you, can your cute clown makeup. You're right. It's a shame to waste all this clown acuteness on my gay mother who would think I was cute even if I took a shit right on her bedroom floor. Wow. 
So why don't we take the new brand for a spin and see what people think? But you don't have your new fits yet. Whatever, I'll just take a headshot selfie. You want to know this? Lol, okay. Clear out your Instagram account, deleting the photos from your stale brand, and post the inaugural selfie showing off your new clown soda. Abby Cross posts the same photo to her account and tags you in it. No going back now, the new brand is officially launched. The day slips as you monitor the comments and feedback on your humble starter post. The reception on your clown soda is almost universally positive. You can't tell if it's real praise or if Abby's followers are just being polite to her friend, just an obvious charity case. I just got a nice pity shout out. It doesn't matter though, because at the end of the day, cloud is cloud and you have to start somewhere. You already have over 10,000 new followers, which seems like an absurdly high number to you. When you consider you're just siphoning off some of Abby's following of 3 million, it's just a tiny drop in the bucket. Still, it's a strong start for only having posted a single clown selfie, and now it's up to your showmanship to build on it. She looks so stupid. Still clown up, huh? Yeah, I'm living living in the pain for a while trying to get into character. There's a character? I thought your clown son was just you. Well, it is. The Jubilee Manifesto says your clown son is an expression of your truest self, like final form. That's like some anime shit. It's totally some anime shit. Well, it sure seems like people are enjoying your clown sona. I think you're just being polite for now. It's all a bit patronizing. Your followers just like whatever you do. Of course, they're gonna be nice to your weird clown friend. We'll see how they really feel once I start rolling out my actual content. I'm really curious to see where it goes. I'll just keep giving you shoutouts until we can get your brand to take flight. Can't believe what a chicken shit I was being about following you. This could be so fun. Losers who'd have a problem with me supporting you aren't even worth any consideration anyway. Yeah, basically. And besides, nobody even said anything yet. Maybe yeah, because nobody has connected me with my previously problematic identity yet. I suppose that is one advantage to clowning up. You keep the old haters guessing. Haters will probably catch up some soon enough, and then we'll see what the actual consequences that will have. I just don't give a fuck anymore. I hope they show themselves. Makes it easier for me to keep an eye on them. Yeah, whatever. Life is too short to worry about the opinions of shitty people. Reflect on your reputation. We're just having some fun here. Speaking of which, looks like you found the wine cellar. Oh yeah. I highly recommend the uh, 2016 Domain Georges Romier Musigny. Excellent vintage. Well, if you say so, I don't actually know anything about wine. Neither do I, I just looked around the cellar and checked prices online. It was the most expensive shit I could find. It goes for $17,000 a bottle. Really? Internet says so, yeah. I had no idea my parents had such pricey stuff down there. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Don't they also have a bunch of fucking Bentleys in the garage? There is one Bentley and a few other cars, but yeah. I spent money on a lot of stupid things. Maybe we should have saved this super expensive wine for a special occasion now. Bitch, this is a special occasion. There's a couple of friends hanging out for the first time in forever, clowning up, making plans to cause problems on purpose. <laughs> You're right. If this doesn't count as a $17,000 night, I don't know what does. Cheers. Let this mark the beginning of a long and fruitful endeavor to exploit the living shit out of your parents and their obscene horde of ill-gotten wealth. I'll certainly drink to that. What else did you have in mind? Give me some time to build the brand first, then I'll let you know what's up. It's all related, you'll see. Suspense is killing me. Hope you're prepared to bring this level of showmanship to your new brand and not waste it all on me. You don't need to worry about that. Just keep supplying me with fresh new simps and I'll play the role of ringmaster. Who's calling? Oh, uh... Nobody. Just some fucking spam. One week later. Alright.
I'm saving there. This game is surprisingly revolutionary. Yeah, I, um, I knew Andrew Hussey was, um, I don't know, vaguely left wing. Um, I didn't know. I mean, I you know, it's just a character. It's just a you know, it's just something that he's writing. I don't think he's actually like a revolutionary socialist or anything. But like, he's always been progressive, especially in like social issues. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a little bit hit hit and miss, I guess. Uh, I guess maybe at the beginning of Homestuck, he was slightly. I mean, he was like liberalish. You know, it was t 2009, you know, uh, imagine uh, the typical liberals approach to homosexuality in 2009. That's that was him, basically. So not not like progressive, but not like homophobic. Uh, and then he became very progressive. Uh, and recently, over, over like the f last few years, like. The official Homestuck account was like tweeting a bunch of stuff about overthrowing capitalism and, and shit like that. And uh, he became a Bernie bro. Um, uh, live and let, uh, life and let live and let live. No, I mean, no, I mean, uh, he was like um, ultimately like supporting. Uh, uh, I don't know. He just made a joke that it wasn't a homophobic joke. Um, it was just a uh, not very funny. <laughs> if you get what I mean, it it was just like a two thousand nine era humor about gay people, kind of. Uh, it was like um, two characters talking to each other, and uh, one of them was like flirting a little bit and the other guy was like oh you no I'm not gay I mean not that there's anything wrong with being gay I'm just saying I'm not gay you know that kind of stuff you know like it's not homophobic uh, it's also not like zoomer humor uh, I don't know how to explain it <laughs> yeah you know like like anyway yeah I'm I, I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying this but uh I've been I've been sitting here and reading out loud for two and a half hours. So uh my throat is uh I'm gonna lose my voice. If if I keep if I keep the stream going, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and not be able to speak. And I like being able to speak. So I'm gonna end the stream here. And uh and we'll get back to this. Uh and I'm gonna refrain from reading any more of this. Uh, until the next time I'm, I'm on stream. So we'll be in the same place. And I'm not going to read ahead. So I'll stream this again. And we'll be right here. When, when, where we left off. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Thanks for the subs. Uh, thanks for the bits. And the follows. Uh, yeah. Hey, good luck in your exam. All right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, I'll 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 let you know on Discord and and Twitter when I'll go live next, cause I don't know when that will be, but uh, yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye.